from Los Angeles to a worldwide audience, this is Boaz Power TV, where we take your life to the next level. Now, internationally known speaker and author, here's Boaz. Hi, welcome to The Power Show. You are part of The Power Nation, and I'm so glad you're here. Because here my aim is to help you improve your health, your relationships, your finances, and your career. And so when people ask us how's business, I teach all over the world in my seminars, respond with one word, how's life, how's everything, the word unbelievable. People won't know what you're up to, but when you do with enthusiasm, they'll think you're doing great and spread positive rumors about you, your life, your company, and your career. This is episode number 107, Boaz Power TV. And I call this one going to the moon. You know, during the five years that it took to complete the paperwork for my family to come to America, we immigrated when I was nine in 1956 from Israel. I got the feeling as a little boy that the move was like going to the moon. Coming to America was literally like going to the moon. It was like winning the biggest lottery in the world to get a chance to come here. You know, other immigrants understood what, um, other immigrants will understand what I'm talking about. It's huge. No matter how much criticism the United States gets around the world, I don't believe the visa lines to come here are getting any shorter. The United States, to many people worldwide, is still considered the pinnacle of freedom and opportunity. That's how my parents saw it back in the early 50s. That's why they did everything possible for us to immigrate to America in 1956. I was reminded of those thoughts the other day as I was driving over a drawbridge at the, the Atlantic Intercoastal Waterway in Florida. You ever been there? It's a fascinating part of our country. I'd flown to Orlando to conduct two seminars and had an afternoon free. Now, being so close, this was the perfect opportunity to see one of America's great strengths, the Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral. The Space Center, located about uh, 35 miles east of Orlando, is on a virtual island. As I passed the Astronaut Hall of Fame, I crossed the Indian River to reach the visitor complex. Down a portion of the island is the Banana River, and to the east is the Atlantic Ocean. Kennedy Space Center, KSC, as the center is depicted in signs throughout the area, is located on the east coast of Florida, about halfway between Jacksonville and Miami. It represents a combination of technology and nature in 140,000 acres of discovery. It was in 1975 that Congress designated nearly half of the Space Center as part of the Canaveral National Seashore. KSC shares its property with the Merritt Island National Wildlife Refuge. As I mentioned, my family immigrated to the U.S. in 1956. President John Kennedy was elected in 1960, and he declared that we were going to the moon. Perhaps there's an important goal in your life that you've been thinking about for a long time. Maybe it's time to declare that you're going after it. Here's the simple way to get there. I teach this in seminars. Write it down. Write it down. What is it you want to accomplish? Write it down. State a completion date, even if it's five years from now. Identify the, stay, the steps necessary and take the smallest possible step first. Such a simple concept. A body in motion tends to stay in motion, so once you begin, it rolls. Incredible. As I got closer to the visitor center at KSC, I could see two tall towers in the distance. These, I later discovered, were launch complexes 39A and 39B, where the space shuttle was launched. Then there was a gigantic 52-story vehicle assembly building. Oh my gosh, how inspiring. At the visitor center, along with a moving memorial to the astronauts that had lost their lives in the space program, there's a full-size mock-up of the space shuttle. Talk about courage. When the shuttle lands, it glides to Earth. No motors are running. There's only one chance to land. No opportunity to fly around and do it again. What courage from those astronauts. Now, a bus takes guests from the visitor center at KSC to the Apollo Saturn V building, which features the rocket that took Neil Armstrong to the moon. Remember that? Oh, my. On the way to that building, the bus wound through restricted areas of the Space Center. We got up close to the landmark vehicle assembly building 
and the Launch Control Center. The Vehicle Assembly Building, by the way, when it comes to volume, is the second largest building in the world. The largest is a building at the Boeing plant in Seattle where the 747 is assembled. The assembly building is imposing. However, I can't even imagine the view as the vertically positioned space shuttle is rolled out on a gigantic tractor and moves along a well-traveled crawlway to the launch pad. The viewing stands are nearby. They are they're over three miles away from the launch complex 39A and B. And that's because, why are they that far away? Because when fully loaded with fuel, the explosive power of the space shuttle at launch could be quite dangerous to anyone close by. I had no idea. Along with the dreams of a nation, everything is large at the Space Center in Florida. The bus stops at the Apollo Saturn V Center, where the space race of the 60s and the first landing of the moon takes center stage. As I stepped in the building, the sight was staggering. There, a few feet off the ground, was the 363-foot-long moon rocket. That's longer than a football field. Stretched horizontally the full length of the building. Now, just to give you some perspective, that's twice the height of the Statue of Liberty. As I said, longer than a football field, twice the height of the space shuttle, and the length of nine 40-foot tour buses. Now, if you were an astronaut in 1969 headed for the moon, just imagine your cabin on such a huge vehicle. Your seat, along with your two companions, is in a small capsule in the end zone. Standing vertically on the launch pad, the rocket below you stretches the entire length of a football field. When fully fueled, the Saturn V rocket contained the explosive potential of an atom bomb. Oh my gosh, this is the largest vehicle ever flown. I gained an even greater respect for America on my visit to the Kennedy Space Center. I also realized the landing on the moon in 1969 did not happen overnight. It all began with an idea. Remember President Kennedy? And then people of vision and courage took one step after another. There were many hardships and challenges along the way. However, they kept their eyes and minds on the goal. They were going to the moon. So is there figuratively, did you just see a light go off? going to the moon. That was one of my lights blowing in my studio, which is my dining room. But I'm going to finish because I'm courageous. Is there figuratively a moon landing in your future? Maybe this is the moment to launch that dream. So the affirmation for this edition of Boaz Power TV is a, a dream affirmation. You may want to write it down. I have identified an important dream in my life and I'm launching it today. I have identified an important dream in my life and I'm launching it today. Thank you for being with me. If you like these messages and many people around the world find them highly beneficial, please forward this to five people you know. Suggest they go to my website, boazpower.com, and they can also subscribe to the free weekly broadcast of Boaz Power TV. And maybe we can help them also launch some of their dreams. You are special. You are unique. You are destined for greatness. Thank you for joining me. I see it in you. You are a champion. Have a powerful day. This has been Boaz Power TV. To comment, see other episodes, or to subscribe to this free broadcast, go to our blog at boazpower.com. That's boazpower.com. We're here to take your life to the next level.